Hey, I'm Jeremy, and I'm excited to kick off a series of videos comparing different live streaming encoders. Our engineers and clients frequently want to know how much the encoder that we choose affects the streaming quality that the end user sees. So we are going to get to the bottom of it together. In this video, I'm going to talk about the methods we use to compare encoders and why we choose them. If you want to skip right to the first comparison, check it out in this card or in the video description. But if you just want to know how to replicate this yourself and understand exactly what you're seeing, then this is the video for you. We are going to focus on the end viewer experience for a common video stream rather than transport streams, but I probably won't be able to stop myself from adding some information about transport streams in each video anyway. Our test content has one minute of test patterns, one minute of New Year's Eve confetti content, and one minute of slow motion water content for various different scenarios. We are simulating a really tough but realistic environment for these encoders. So the video is streamed at five megabits per second. At 1080p 30, Five megabits per second is right at a breaking point, where you can still see some blocking and stuttering if the encoder is struggling. We will just test H.264 or AVC encoding, since that's what's most common right now. But I will comment if HEVC is available on that encoder. We just won't be comparing its quality. For the record, using a higher bitrate or HEVC will beat any tweaks that you can optimize for lower bandwidth AVC. Finally, the keyframe interval will always be at two seconds, which should show more obvious differences between different encoders' GOT structures. The test content originates in ProRes and is played back from a vMix machine, and it looks incredible in its raw format, so check the description for a link to a blog post where you can download the source footage and compare it yourself. Using the encoders, we stream this content to YouTube Live and archive the stream for your viewing. We use Virtual Video Control Room, or VVCR, our cloud video routing solution that you can try too, as a middle point between the encoder and YouTube. Now, we use VVCR for two reasons. First, it allows us to use encoders that stream either SRT or RTMP to get to YouTube. We have access to YouTube's beta SRT ingest, but as of 2023, most people don't yet. So it also allows us to stream not only to YouTube, but also to a Makito X4D decoder, which feeds a ProRes recorder for editing. This provides us with a great comparison to see what YouTube's own delivery compression does to the footage and lets us edit the encoded content into our videos. It's important to highlight that VVCR does not change the quality of the stream at all. It just repackages the video into different stream formats. In other words, it's transmuxing, not transcoding. Overall, integrating VVCR provides us with a flexible and repeatable test. But the next problem is, how do we compare two encoders of two different price tiers and supposedly quality tiers to show their strengths, but also make it a fair fight? You know, you don't drive a sports car just to drive the speed limit, but sometimes you have to. So we are going to run two tests for each encoder. First, we will test them at the same settings where we take the less capable encoder and duplicate its settings in the more capable encoder, theoretically, of course. Secondly, we will optimize each to higher quality settings to the best of our ability by changing encoder profiles or GOT structure or whatever else we have at our disposal. However, we are always going to leave all tests at the constant five megabits per second bit rate, the same resolution in keyframe settings, because at the end of the day, just changing those can always make a big difference. Finally, how are you going to be able to participate? Well, in each comparison video, we will link to unlisted stream archives with the encoder and quality hidden in the descriptions. I think that developing an eye for encoding quality is best done with blind testing, so I encourage you to do it and have fun with it. At the end of each test, we hope that you'll leave with your own observations. Some of these tests will have clear differences while others won't. We hope to hear your opinions in the comments and please recommend new encoders to test. Ready to get started? 
check out the first video here and linked in the description. Thanks for watching and see you then.